Paris, France. Perhaps like thousands of writers before you, the sights and sounds of the city have inspired you to pen a little poetry. But the pencil at the bottom of your bag has got a broken lead, and when you try your fountain pen, it seems to produce nothing but inky blotches and torn paper. But don't panic. You're faced with the same frustrations as 1930s Hungarian paper editor Laszlo Biro. Fortunately, Laszlo and his brother decided to do something about their malfunctioning pens and came up with a new writing implement. Ballpoint pens are now so popular, millions are manufactured, sold, borrowed and lost every day. So how do they do it? We've come to Paris. Not just because we like the food and wine, but because this is home to the big company. Launched in 1950, Bic's version of the ballpoint pen quickly captured the market. Since then, they've produced over 100 billion. Enough laid end-to-end -to, -end to circle the globe 3,000 times. And even now, in an age dominated by the computer keyboard, having a pen which can write for over two kilometers is extremely useful. Even if only for doodling, writing on desks, or scrawling over other people's work. But ensuring every pen has the right stuff requires constant monitoring and testing, carried out by staff like Maëlle Rochelet. The value of big pens is in their writing quality. That's why we're devoted to constantly checking them, every hour of every day. The key to producing the perfect ballpoint pen lies with the tiny ball of metal in the tip. The job of this ball is to control the flow of fluid. When the pen's not liquid ink in. Then when writing, as it spins, it transfers just the right amount to the paper. But the problem is, writing produces enormous pressures on the tip. Imagine an elephant pirouetting on a golf ball and you get the idea. The answer is to make the ball from an incredibly tough metal called tungsten carbide, which is so strong, it's also used by the military to make armor-piercing ammunition. The tungsten carbide begins as a fine powder, which Andre Ginzak feeds into a compression machine to form tiny pellets just one millimetre across. But these pellets are far from the smooth, even sphere required to make a pen nib. So they're fed to this curious-looking machine, which looks like a cross between a wine press and a gramophone player. This is a lapping machine. Using pre-cut balls as a guide, the press is adjusted, lubricating oil is added, and thousands of imperfect pellets are poured inside. They now need something strong enough to grind away the super tough tungsten. No, it's not French mustard, but a special paste made from diamond dust. Like a particularly strong medicine, just one teaspoon is enough. But even using the most abrasive sandpaper known to man, they must still leave the machine to sit and grind away for over five days. When finally opened, what is revealed is not mouth-watering caviar, but thousands of glistening ballpoints. But to make sure they're up to scratch, the balls must first meet the approval of Bic's extremely thorough Madame Annick Guiquel. Annick has been casting her expert eye over the metal balls for 37 years, inspecting 50,000 every day. That's around one and a half billion so far. It's a look and it's habit as well. It takes a little time to get the knack, but once you know what to do, it's very quick. But you have to concentrate on your work. Samples from every batch are checked for minute flaws, and if more than one in every 5,000 is found to be less than perfect, the whole lot are consigned to the dustbin. Once approved, the metal balls are free to be joined, or peened as they call it, to a socket section called a point, which is punched out of a length of brass, nickel silver or Stanley steel. To run smoothly, it's essential the ball sits snugly in the sockets, 
leaving only the tiniest gap to let the ink through. It's very hard to make a high-quality ballpoint because it must be crafted on the micron level. That's a 60th the diameter of a human hair. Achieving that precision is what gives our points their quality. To ensure the ball and socket fit together properly, tiny cameras keep watch on the process. But even with a perfect nib assembly, they still need ink with exactly the right viscosity. So in their ink workshop, master brewer Roger L'Espagne makes the meanest ink in town. It looks like a demon Bordeaux, but it's a precise mix of dyes, resins and solvents. But it's impossible to judge its thickness by eye. So to make sure it will flow smoothly through the ballpoint, it's checked by Roger's colleague, Benedict. Benedict's mini press can precisely measure the ink's viscosity, ensuring it's neither too watery nor too syrupy. The ink is housed in a plastic tube, which is formed by being heated and then extruded through a bath of water. Meanwhile, the hexagonal barrel of the pen is formed by injection moulding. All that remains now is for all the elements to be combined. So here in the assembly room, an army of machines work 24 hours a day. The plastic cartridges are filled with ink and then attached to the precision ballpoint. Batches are then tested to make sure the pens are fitted with caps and plugs that match the ink colour. And the remaining elements are brought together in a ballet of movement and colour. Et voila! Another batch of ballpoint pens is ready to begin a life writing the next great novel. Or perhaps just a postcard home. So next time you find yourself stuck for something to write, why not pen a line to this ubiquitous piece of classic design? Because with enough ink in each tiny tube to produce over 100,000 words, this handy pen undeniably has the right stuff.